Hi. How is everyone? Okay. I'm going to ask you before I start saying hi to everyone. Please, please, please. I want to know whether I'm audible and visible. And in the meantime, I'll say hi to everyone. Hi, Lakshit. Hi, Neha. Hi, Chitra. Hi, Rudakshi. Hi, Ayush. Hi, Ansika. Hi, Ashok. Hi, Aditya. Hi, Sabita. I see Papiya was there uh, somewhere. Hi, okay, okay, great. <laughs> I see lots of thumbs up, which means that I am audible and visible. So a very, very big good afternoon to you, a very, very big warm and welcome to our session today. It is time to level up. Now, as I have told you all before, our level up series is all about taking ourselves to the next level in terms of our skills. And whatever the sessions are that we've been doing so far have all been in that direction, right? Taking our skills to the next level. And we've been dealing specifically with um, skills that are actually going to be helping us in this brand new academic year because I know summer vacation is getting over very soon and schools are going to be starting. So trust me, you're going to need the skills that we have for you over here okay so we've got a very very interesting topic for you over here and this topic for today is school organization tips for students hey talking about students let me tell you that um when i was your age which is when i was a student um uh, i personally used to find um Student life very difficult. What can I say? I used to find it all a bit overwhelming. Like right? you know, like um, students have to. I used to feel like students. It's so difficult for students. We have to go to school. We are studying all day. Then after that, you know, you're preparing and for deadlines. Then you come back. Then you have to do tuitions. Then you have to, you know, give in your projects. Then you have to study for exams. Then you've got extracurricular activities. Oh, and on top of that, you have to spend time with your family and do sports and exercise exercise also. Isn't that hard? Like I personally used to find it very difficult to be a student. I want to know whether any of you feel the same way also. Do you find it difficult? Yeah, Sanitya says, ma'am, me too. And uh, someone over here says, Rutakshi also says, ma'am, this is my first live session. Hi, Rutakshi, welcome. Muskan says, yes, same ma'am. So many people saying, same ma'am, a little bit. I also, I also, yes, ma'am, me too. <laughs> Okay, so obviously like uh, this seems to be a bit of a common problem, right? Us feeling like we have so much to do and so little time to do it and how do we manage everything and then because of all of this, there's a lot of stress. So I'm telling you, when I was your age, this is the way that I used to feel but then I also discovered some tips and tricks that actually helped me feel a lot more confident and helped me feel a, feel a lot more, uh, lot less stressed, I would say. And I realized <clears throat> that the more organized I was, okay, the easier my school life became. And which is why I think that today what we're going to do with you is very, very important for you because if you learn how to organize your school life a little bit better, you will find that you actually have much more time to uh, do a lot more things, right? And this way, if you're more organized, things become quite easy peasy because things don't pile up, then you're not always feeling like, oh no, I have so much to do and so little time to do it, okay? Apart from this, if you're organized, you will realize that you will also be able to focus better. And if you focus better, you will actually be able to excel in your studies. And who doesn't want that, right? And apart from all this, uh, if you're organized, it's actually very, uh, how do I say this? There's a lot less stress, so you feel more calm and in control. So organization is definitely a very good skill to have, right? What do you what do you think? Do you think that it helps to be organized? Yeah? Come on, tell me. Does organization help? Uh, Aditya says, hello ma'am, new to Baiju's YouTube channel, hello. Manasvi says, time management, yes Manasvi. Manasvi, we had done a session on this also. That also actually is a great way to get organized. I am going to come to that in a bit. 
Yes, 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 yes. So many people say thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Yes, 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 it helps. So yes, we know that organization helps, right? So today what we are going to be specifically focusing on is how to stay organized as a student, right? Because we are all starting this new academic year. So how do we become more organized? Well, I'm going to be giving you tips in three macro areas. I'm going to be talking to you about organization in terms of time, organization in terms of your things, and organization in terms of your space and you will find that when you uh, learn how to be organized in these three areas your school life is going to become very easy peasy because things are just going to start falling in place you'll be able to manage your time better you'll be able to manage your things better and you'll have a lot more focus okay so we're going to start with our first area which is organizing our time now organizing our time simply means time management now some of you i know were there at my uh, session last week when we did um, a session on time management for you right so time management is actually a very uh, important uh, skill in terms of organization all right and uh, for those of you who were not, who haven't attended that session, well, then you should go ahead and attend that session because you will get a lot more tips and a lot more detail, okay? Today, I'm just going to be giving you some few points that will help you, but for more detail, definitely go and check out that session. You will find it very, very helpful. So, my first tip in terms of uh, managing your time or organizing your time is... Well, you definitely need to focus on getting a calendar. Now, what is the benefit of having a calendar? Well, if you have your to-do list or the tasks that you need to put down on your list on a calendar, it's very, very helpful. Why? Because then you don't have to keep all this information in your head. Sometimes, you know what happens when we put information in our head? I think, oh, I'm very good. I have a very good memory. So I'm go I don't need a calendar. It's so much effort to make a calendar. I'll just remember it. So tomorrow I've got my social science exam. Day after I've got my debate competition. Uh, the day after that I have to give an assignment. Oof. Why do you want to remember so much? If you actually have a calendar, it's going to give you this very simple, easy to glance at format and you're going to be able to see whatever you need to in one glance, right? So you don't need to try to remember, oh, when is my exam? When is my deadline? When is my sports day? <laughs> you don't need all of that. So it clears up brain space or mind space and you have it at a glance, which means that you can get your, uh, you know, the glance of what you have to do maybe in a day, maybe even in a week and maybe even in a month, you have it all in front of you and if you use uh, digital calendars then even better because digital calendars the advantage of technology is that you actually get reminders also right so you'll have ping tomorrow's debate competition ping do <laughs> you have to study for your math exam or whatever it is so it's quite helpful in that sense now i want to know from you how many of you use calendars give me a thumbs up using a calendar is a very good thing to do okay it's very very helpful what should you be putting down in your calendar is the question over here hi hi sassy hi sonali hi ayush hi shweta hi anukriti hi shinavas see a lot of people are saying me 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 i use a calendar yes ma'am well that's a very good thing to do what do you put down on your calendar typically what are the things that we should put on our calendars like uh, what would you say considering that you're a student what would you put down in your calendar tell me tell me what you would put down like for example i would put down uh, exam dates or what other dates can you put down? Yes, you use a to-do list, Sai Sesi uh, Kumar, very nice, okay. To-do list, very good. Important dates, Lakshit, absolutely right. Then what else? What work you have to do, homework that has to be done, very good. Uh, correct, what are the dates of your tests, right? So this is, these are all, the goals can be put down onto the calendar, absolutely true. Uh, which chapter that you're doing on a particular day, that can be done, Pl plans, mock tests absolutely right hey all of y'all are like 
experts, right? Well, then you already know what a calendar is used for. It's to put down uh, the important tasks that you have to do as well as the important dates that you need to remember. So getting a calendar for yourself or putting down your stuff on the calendar is very, very important. And this is the first tip I have for you in terms of organizing your time. Now, the second tip that I have for you in terms of organizing your time is that once you've done a calendar, you've put your to-do list on the calendar, this is a great thing, all right? But you actually need to go ahead and see whether whatever you put down, you're actually managing to achieve that, right? So I would say that definitely my next tip to you would be review your previous week. So supposing you've planned your week on your calendar from say Monday to Saturday. My suggestion to you would be that on Sunday, go back to your calendar and, calendar and see, have I managed to finish everything that I've got on my calendar, right? If you finished everything on your calendar, super job, pat yourself on the back and congratulate yourself. You're doing well in terms of time management. But for some reason, if you have not been able to finish whatever you have on your calendar, then you need to go back and you need to ask yourself the question as to, uh, as to why was I not able to finish this particular task and understand the reason why you were not able to finish this particular task and then course correct. Okay, again, let me give you an example. Suppose you have on your calendar that you have to do... Um, one hour of something, say, say one hour of trigonometry, okay? One hour of trigonometry problems every single day. Now, on Sunday, when you go through your calendar, you see, oops, I was supposed to do one hour of trigonometry problems every single day, but I couldn't do it. Now, it has not happened. You need to ask yourself, why has it not happened? Then you may come up, this is just a hypothetical situation, okay, it's just an example. You may come up with the answer to say, oh, I could not do my trigno trigonometry sums because every day I was doing studying with my friends and when I was studying with my friends, I was focusing on other subjects or we were laughing a little bit more or there was a lot of chit chat and so I was a little distracted and so I could not finish that. Then in that case, what should you be doing? You should say, okay, I know what the problem is. I know why I couldn't do it. Now what do I need to do? I need to course correct. So what will I do in this situation? I'll say, okay, now from now onwards, I think it's better for me to have some study time on my own. I'll go to the library and I'll sit down or I'll sit on my, you know, on my homework desk and do. But basically, I am uh, correcting what I have done wrong in that particular week. Right? So reviewing your previous week is a very good idea. Right? Okay, next. So you've got your calendar, you've reviewed what you need to do, what you have done in the previous week or not done in the previous week. What is another tip that I would tell you? I would tell you that now that you've done that, you need to also plan your next week, right? So what will you do in terms of planning your next week? In terms of planning your next week, you will first of all clean your calendar for the tasks that have already been completed, right? So completed tasks, take them away right because you don't need those anymore they're done now apart from this what are the tasks that were not done those tasks have to now go into your upcoming week right as well as any other additional tasks that may come up in this week so this way what have you done in terms of time management you've got yourself a calendar which was tip number one you have reviewed your previous week at the end of every week you will do this exercise to see whether you're on the right track if you're not on the right track then you need to correct it and then after this what do you need to do you need to plan ahead for your time also and this way you will see that time management becomes a much much easier thing to do right so these were the tips about organizing your time now i really will tell you again we have done time management which is organizing of time in a much more detailed fashion in the level up series last week so i would suggest for those of you who, are, who were not there go go and watch that with video and even if you were there go back and watch that video because it never helps to refresh it in our minds right Okay, Pranav says, because busy Laxmo, what is that? Uh, Ma'am, why can't you see the comma? 
which means why can't I see the comments? Well, I'm sorry if I'm not able to respond to all comments. Please uh, know that I really am trying my best, but the comments are moving so fast. Everyone is writing something at the same time that it does become a little difficult for me to pay attention to all. But do know that I love to talk to all my students and as and when possible, I will try and respond to your comment or your question. Right. So many people say, ma'am, please conduct a session introduction of students. What does that mean? Uh, can you explain what you mean? And I'm sure we can try and work it out for you. All right. How are you, ma'am? Thank you. I'm very good, ma'am. You are the best. Thank you, Yashar Shvi. Yashar says, good afternoon, ma'am. Hi, Yashar. It's good to see you again always. Okay. Now, the, uh, Asna says, ma'am, you are my favorite. Uh, Shruti says, ma'am, how can I plan my revision work? Shruti is the same way. If you know that you have revision, you know that that revision, there's a lot of revision that has to be done. What you need to do is break that revision up into a little bit and put it onto your to-do list. So for example, if you need to revise social science, then you say, okay, one hour of social science every day or one hour of maths every day. Or if depending on your schedule, you may need to do half a chapter on one day, half a chapter on the other day. I'm saying it doesn't really matter. Revision, uh, ideally, I would say revision should be a year-long process and not just during the time of exams. I've always said this. Okay, so revision, ideally, if you've done schoolwork, then, you know, at the end of the week, try and revise your work also and whatever you have to do, you put onto your calendar and whatever you've already done, clean out from your calendar, right? So this is how revision work can be tackled, right? Abhishek says, you're so positive, ma'am. You have a smile on your face. Yes, smiling is a good thing, right? Okay, now, uh, can you please give a project timetable for class 10 students? Well, what we will do in that case is we will keep this request in mind and we will try and do a session for you at some point in time. Okay, all right, now quickly, we are done with time management. Let's move on. Let's move to our next area of organizing, which is organizing your things. Now, just imagine this particular scenario, okay? It's morning and you have to go to school, right? Your school bus is waiting outside and it's honking away, which means you have to hurry up and go to school, right? You know the school bus is over there, you know you're late, but you can't help it because you're at home frantically trying to find your Hindi book. Where is my Hindi book? Where is my Hindi book? Where is my Hindi book? Now, this is a sort of situation which uh, causes a lot of stress. But unfortunately, this is the kind of situation that does tend to happen in all our homes. Has it ever happened to you that, you know, your school bus is outside, you know you're late and you can't find any of your things? Come on, tell me, has it ever happened to any of you? Tell me, I know it's happened to me a lot of times. When I'm last minute trying to find my English book or my Hindi book, Tanisha says, yes, ma'am. JSS says, yes. Anushka says, yes. Ayamad says, yes. Pixel says, yes. Krishna says, uh, yes. Mavish says, yes. Okay, 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 okay. I say a lot of yes, 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 yes. Cool. So obviously, like I said, this is a very common situation. How do we handle the situation? Well, we need to handle the situation better by organizing our things. And the first tip that I have for you in terms of organizing our things is I would say, please organize your bag. A school bag is something that every student has to carry, right? And in fact, the sad or the bad or thing is that uh, as we grow you know I mean we start going higher and higher up in our academic year our school bag gets bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier naturally because we're doing so much more now as it gets bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier which means that it starts getting more and more messy also right so there is a very big need for all of us to organize the school bag very efficiently so what should go into the school bag well, we should have only the important things that are needed. Clear out the other stuff that you don't need. So what do you need to do for this to understand what you should put in and what you should not put in? Well, for this, you need to refer to your uh, schedule for the day or you need to refer to your curriculum, right? My suggestion to you would be please pack your bag the night before. Do not wait for the next morning just when the school, bag, uh, school bus is outside to say, oh, I have to pack my bag. It's never going to work. You're definitely going to forget something. So I'm saying take a breath, do the right thing at the right time, 
pack your bag the night before take a look at your study ta uh, study timetable and say oh, okay tomorrow i got english oh then i better put in the english essay that i've done for homework otherwise if i don't do this the night before the next morning either i'm going to be searching for that english essay or i'm going to forget it completely and when the teacher asks me i say oh ma'am actually you know what i did it but then i forgot it at home what's the point right that's that's a lot of waste of time energy effort everything so i would say to save all that pack your bag organize your bag pack it the night before because this way what happens you're a little more relaxed there's no last minute hurry and apart from this you will uh, in case you do remember something you still have from the night to the morning to remember it so packing your bag the night before and organizing it is a very helpful tip all right next I would say bag is organized. Next thing is how do I be more organized in school? When then I would say take organized notes. We know that notes are very, very important. These are our study tools, right? This is eventually what we are referring to to help us in our exams, to help us in our revision. So if our notes are not organized, naturally there's going to be stress. Naturally there's going to be confusion. So take organized notes. Now, how do you take organized notes? Well, I have done a session for you in this Level Up series again on Cornell note taking. The Cornell note taking method is actually a brilliant way to organize your notes. It helps you to take the notes, organize the notes as well as review the notes. So in that sense, it's a super, super way to organize your notes. For those of you who attended the session, I hope you're practicing it and doing this regularly for those of you who have not attended the session please go and watch the session because this is a great way to organize your notes right it's really really very helpful apart from this i would say go ahead and uh, make mind maps also mind maps are a great visual tool how do mind maps work? So basically, for example, if you want the whole chapter at a glance, how will this work for you? You will say, okay, this is the chapter name. Okay, then you will have small arrows which will give you, lead you to the main topics in that particular chapter. Then from there, you will have subtopics right for each of these topics so basically in a glance you have the whole whole mind map over there right okay so this is a way to organize your notes i would definitely suggest organizing your notes also Apart from this, I would say color coding and labeling your things in terms of your notes or even your calendar is actually very helpful. So for example, if you have a different uh, textbook or a different folder, different color folder for each of your subjects, this is definitely very helpful. Like for example, red color is Hindi, green color is English, uh, blue color is uh, science or whatever it is. So when you're packing your bag and you take a look at your timetable, you say, ah, tomorrow I have science, blue, the blue folder goes in. You don't even need to think about it so much because it's all available for you at a glance so labeling and color coding is actually a very very helpful tool apart from this you could also uh, color code and label your calendar this is also very helpful so for example in the calendar what i tend to do is i color code the tasks that have already been done in a different color i color code uh, deadlines in a different color i color code exam dates in a different color so this way when i'm just looking at the calendar i have all this information ah okay okay blue means uh, i have an exam tomorrow uh, red means i've got a deadline to finish so stuff like that you will find Find it much easier now what colors you use how you color code that really depends on your uh, imagination your creative creativity and actually more than imagination and creativity i would say do something that is easy for you to follow right okay then what is the next thing that we are going to talk about? We are going to be talking about organizing your space. This is the third area that we are going to be talking about. We've spoken about organizing your time. We've spoken about organizing your things. And now this is the last area that I'm going to be talking about, which is organizing your space. And you will see that if you organize your space also in a good manner, in the correct way, it will actually help you to focus much better. So let's get into the details. Okay now first thing that you need to do in terms of uh, organizing your space my strong suggestion to you would be to have a suitable space for your studying which means keep a designated area for where you study this is very very helpful because when you keep going back to that place your mind actually gets into the practice of learning better 
So what do I mean by this? Have a desk where you regularly go to study. Have a chair where you are, you know, sitting there regularly to, uh, to study. Now in terms of chair, one of the tips that I would give you is have a comfortable chair because you're going to be sitting there for long hours, but don't have it so comfortable that you just fall off to sleep. Like very often, <laughs> it used to happen to me when I was a student. I used to say, oh, I'm studying at home. I'll just lie down on the bed and study my history book. Finished. In two minutes, I used to be asleep. So I would suggest do not do this. Have a chair that's comfortable, but have a chair that also helps you to focus. Apart from that, things in terms of lighting. So light, uh, chair, table, all of these things, please organize in a way that it actually helps you to study better and, uh, you know, helps you to focus better. Oh, another tip that I have for you in this uh, you know, in this sort of, uh, in this area is to tell you that please don't keep changing your study area every single day because what is going to happen is you'll have to keep getting used to the study area every single day. So one day you'll sit here, then the next day you'll sit there and you say, oh, you know what, this is not comfortable for me. Oh, the lighting is not okay over here. You have to keep getting used to it. It doesn't make any sense. Decide one place for a study area and stick to that place and you will really find that every time you go to sit over there, your brain knows that it has to study, your mind knows it has to study and this will actually help you to focus much more right okay next I would say block all distractions this is the second tip that I would tell you what do I mean by this which means that when you're you know your space is organized you're sitting at your study desk try and you know clear out unnecessary distractions for example Switch off your mobile phone or keep it on silent. If you've got, you know, lots of windows of social media over doing ping, 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 shut all of that. It's not needed when you're sitting to study. If you have, you know, a separate room for yourself to study, very good. If you don't have a separate room, then what you need to do is keep your desk away from, you know, from the loud TV or something like that. Another very good way to block out distractions is to use earphones because this will just block out all the noise and help you to focus on what you're supposed to focus on right apart from that what are the other tips that i could tell you in this oh yeah another thing that you could do is if you live with a lot of people tell your parents or tell your family you know what now i'm going to be studying please nobody call me for the next one hour or two hours it's a very good thing to do Another thing that you could do is use a timer. Now, how does a timer help? A timer helps you to not keep worrying about the time. The timer will automatically give you a reminder when it's, you know, time to finish one task and time to, fin you know, start the next one. So, for example, you set the timer for 45 minutes for studying science. Then, ting, time for science is over. Now, 10 minute break. Okay, then ting. Now it's time to get back to your studies. So this way you will actually be able to organize yourself much more and cut out distractions. And this is a very, very helpful tool. Himani says, ma'am, can we study on the floor? Uh, Himani, if it's comfortable for you and you've got a comfortable corner where you, you know, it helps you to study, I would say it's fine. Make sure that the lighting is okay. But don't choose a place that's going to be uncomfortable or so comfortable that you're going to fall asleep. Okay, all right. Then, uh, ma'am, I made Cornell of uh, fabric and it really helped me to understand this very easily. Wow, Avishek, I'm so happy to hear that. Everyone, y'all can also follow lead. Go ahead, watch that session. You will really find that the note-taking method really helps you. Can we study on the bed? Uh... I would not recommend it because I've had the very bad experience of falling asleep. So I would not recommend it. But if you feel you can focus on the bed, okay, do it, you know, but I would say it's avoidable. All right. Now, my last uh, tip that I have in terms of this uh, section is to tell you get rid of clutter. Getting rid of clutter means getting rid of all the unnecessary things. So which means in your study area, whatever you've designated for yourself, Clear out all unnecessary things. Like sometimes we have so many piles of textbooks, okay, over there. Yesterday's textbooks, today's textbooks, tomorrow's textbook. If I was to see all that only, I feel, oh no, oh no, I have so much to do. No. Clear it out. Keep only today's books. Clear out yesterday's books. Don't worry about tomorrow's books. Right now, just focus on what has to be today and this will help you to focus on what is needed much, much better. Also, another thing in terms of clutter, sometimes we have so many loose papers lying around. Oh, and the biggest thing I find that creates clutter is stationery. Three types of uh, sh uh, sharpeners, four types of pencils, none of which are working, two types of erasers, 
what is the need to have so much? Just keep one pen, one working pencil, one ruler, one eraser and that's all you need, right? So make sure that you put away all extra stuff in this area uh, and in this I would really suggest you while I know that we all like buying fancy stationery buy it if we want but buy it judiciously which means buy it a little smartly don't buy more than what we need it's not necessary and if you already have extra stuff then I would say please go ahead and give it to someone who needs it and this way you'll be able to clear the clutter, clutter also and you'll be able to help someone also and you will have top notch focus and with that I come to the end of my session today we have spoken about organization in terms of three areas we have spoken about time we have spoken about things and we have spoken about space now I want you to tell me what have we discussed in these three areas quickly quickly what did we discuss in terms of time what are the tips that I gave you over there come on come on come on tell me uh, somebody says I tie my hair so that I don't fall asleep very good that's a good idea Ayushi right uh, all studies get messed up due to tension this happened for me a lot of times well then Papiya get into a little bit of more organization uh, what have we learnt in terms of organization of time manage time how how have we what uh, have a to-do list what should we put the to-do list on yes use a calendar I see that over there what else what should we do once we've made that calendar? Come on, come on, come on, come on. What were the other things I told you in terms of organizing time? Quickly, I want to finish my session fast. Well, uh, st yes, study space. That was in the terms of space. We should have a suitable study space. What else did we discuss in terms of time? Come on, uh, come on, to-do list. Color coding. Absolutely right. That was in terms of things. Color coding. Then I think you all have liked these tips very much. Good. Mark things. Very good. What else? Review. Muskan says review. Very good. So reviewing your calendar is very good. And reviewing your calendar uh, not just for the previous week but you also need to plan for the next week. Then in terms of things what else do you need to organize? Come on. Come on. Mind maps. Organizing notes. That's very good. Uh, we will put it over here. Organize notes. What else? One very important thing in terms of uh, organizing your things, the first thing I told you that we need to organize. What is it? Cornell notes is part of organizing our notes. Stationary things is, yes, clearing, ready your bag, then bag. Bag is the very important point over here. And space is clearing out the clutter. And what else do we need to do? We need to block distractions. Right? So these were the points that we have discussed for today. So we've learned a lot, right? We've learned a lot in terms of organizing our things. You see, if you understand how we've done this entire pattern of the Level Up series for you, you will really understand and appreciate how brilliant it is in terms of starting your new year. We did. I did a session for you on Cornell note taking, which is all about organizing your notes. We did a session for you on time management, which is all about organizing your uh, time. We did a session for you on research, which is basically how you're go going to go ahead and find information for the rest of the year. And now we've talked about about organizing your school system so to my what I would suggest to you my dear students before I end the session today is please go back watch all these sessions watch the one on Cornell note taking watch the one on research watch the one on time management and watch this one again if you need to if you watch all these and pick up these skills you will find that you are in a much much better place of your you're being really really organized and you not feeling like oh no it's so difficult to be a student all these things that we've taught you all these skills that we've taught you are all about how to become better students and yet at the same time not feel the stress just to make it easy peasy right okay so this is it for me uh, I thank you all for your participation you all have been wonderful in terms of participating giving your responses and I absolutely love being with all of you all the time so I'm going to sign off now and I'm going to see you soon bye bye